All right, guys, let's go ahead and run through. Oops, wrong one. We're on um, review worksheet number one. Okay, so remember your diagram, really important to get your bearing here. So if the plane is flying 600 miles, 112 degrees. So here we have 112, 600 miles per hour. The, the wind blowing from, shouldn't have, from the southeast means it's coming down from here. So it's actually blowing this way. So it's blowing from the southeast, which means it's actually blowing in the opposite direction, northwest. That would be 90 plus 45, which is 135 degrees. Oops, so I didn't draw that correctly. 112 would be a little bit shorter of that. So um, if we go ahead and sum in the x direction, we have 600 cosine 112. Summing in the y direction would be the 600 sine 112. Okay, and then I'm adding the green component, which would be 25 cosine 135 and 25 sine 135. Okay, we want to find the resulting speed and direction, so we're just doing our general summation here. So if I type these out, 600 cosine 112 plus 25 cosine 135, so negative 242. 0.44, and then the other component is 600 sine 112 plus 25 sine 135. Um, that's 573. Adrian Giannis to the office. 0.99. Okay, magnitude of the vector. We're taking square root of both of these squared. So this is my a squared plus b squared. So if I take 242.44. 44 squared plus 573.99 squared. Square root it. Get 623.1 miles per hour. That's my magnitude. And then my theta is inverse tangent of, where we take the y value, divide by the x value. Okay, so we're inverse tangent 573.99 divided by negative 242.44 to get negative 67 degrees. But remember, we don't like to answer like that. So this is a complete, that one's final. Negative 67 degrees, that's actually spitting it out um, as being down here. But remember, we don't want this answer. We want the one in the opposite direction. So I'm going to add 180. So if I add 180 degrees, we end up at 112.89 degrees. If they're giving your answers, like, or like they're giving you the information in standard form, I would be fine with you if you answer in standard form. 112.8, sorry, 98 degrees. We don't need to give bearings if it's giving it to you in standard form. So that would be number one. Okay, next one now we have three forces. Uh, okay, so first one's 60, uh, wait, three forces, oh, well, they all have the same magnitude. Okay, one has a direction of north 37 degrees west, so north 37 degrees west would be right here. This is the 37 here, but remember, we don't want to actually write it that way. We want to write it in standard form, so if I take 90 minus 37, this is 53. So that's actually what I want to keep it as, and that's 60 newtons. Um, one with a direction of south 30 degrees west which would be 30 degrees like this. But remember, we don't like to write it that way. We actually want to do the full standard form. So 180 plus what would be 60 is 240 degrees, right? So this whole angle is 240 degrees. Ah, got rid of the whole structure here. Okay, 240 degrees, which is this vector. That's also 60. And then one of the direction of southwest. South west would just be, um, and I don't really like these. These ones are kind of rough because I probably didn't sketch it perfectly, but it's going to essentially be this direction. That's 45 degrees, right? So 180 plus 45 is going to be 225 degrees. I'll just write it out here. And it's also 60 newtons. Okay, so if we add 
all in the x direction. We have 60 newtons at 53 degrees. We have 60 newtons at 240 degrees. And we have 60 newtons at 225 degrees. Okay, the y components, 60 at 53 degrees, 60 at 240 degrees, 60 at 240 degrees, Oops, sign. Okay, same thing like before, we're finding the resultant magnitude and direction, so we just sum these guys all up. So 60 cosine 53 plus 60 cosine 240 plus 60 cosine 225, 50.06. And then in my other direction, 60 sine 53 plus 60 sine 240 plus 60 sine did I have a repeat in there, guys? Whoops, Two, this is 225. 240, 225. So that's negative 46.47, I'll say. Okay, resultant force is just the magnitude where I take, in this case, my a squared plus b squared, right? So I just, I'm adding, squaring these numbers and adding them together. So 50.06 squared plus 46.47 squared to the one half power is 68.3. That's going to be Newtons, okay? And then our direction is inverse tangent of negative 46.47 divided by 50.06. So inverse tangent negative 46.47 divided by 50.06, negative 42.8 degrees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like I mistyped something here. Because it should be more additive than it is. For the risk of making the videos here, let's see. North. Oh gosh darn it, guys. It's because this one here is not 53. It's supposed to be north 37 degrees west is actually over. We just need to pick, fix some of our angles. So it's not 53 degrees. See? And the, here, you know what? Here's a really good illustration of how you're not going to get it right 100% the first time. Sometimes you have to kind of play around with it, revisit it, just take some patience. Okay, that first one was actually north 37 degrees west. I always mix these up. So that's actually 90 plus 37. That's 127 degrees is my other angle. So let's just put the edits in red here. Um, obviously, it's going to change my resultant vectors. So let's try that again. 60 cosine 127 plus 60 cosine 240 plus 60 cosine 225. Negative 108. 108.54, and then this guy, uh, 60 cosine 127 plus 60 sine 127 plus 60 sine 240 plus 60 sine 225. Negative 46. Point four seven. Okay, so now it's going to change my a squared plus b squared, right, as well. So now I have 108.54 squared plus 46.47 squared. Square root. Which is 118. 118. Point 0.1 newtons. Okay, I can confidently say that's the answer. That's the magnitude. And then I'm going to change this as well. Okay, again, guys, pardon the error, but actually I think that's a really good illustration of how it doesn't always just work out so simply. Sometimes you have to kind of go back in and revise your setup. Just take some patience sometimes. Okay, so now we're doing inverse tangent of these two. If I divide it out, 
we get 23 degrees. Okay, here's where we want to be careful, though, because notice that both of these components are negative. That's telling me that the resultant vector is in quadrant 3, where they're both negative. So this is where I have to add 180 degrees, right? If I were to actually get it in standard form, they were giving it in terms of bearings. So I do want to actually give in terms of bearings. 23 degrees is displacement from the x-axis, so it would be similar down here. So if that's 23 degrees, it's complement 90 minus 23.1 degrees is 66.9 degrees. Um, so this guy is 66.9 degrees. So we could say south, 66.9 degrees west, because we're starting south, moving toward the westerly pole, or west 23.1 degrees south, although it's not actually written that way. More often than not, you can, like, that, that would be fine. Okay. All right, next we have two forces acting on an object. Okay, so one with a force of 42 at 167. So 42, 36 at 16 degrees. So 36 at 16. We're going to find the one that would produce the equilibrium vector. We're actually going to solve the normal way and then we make a little tweak at the end to find the equilibrium. So summing in the x direction, I have 42 mm, cosine 167 plus 36 cosine 16. Okay, summing in the y direction, we have 42 sine 167 plus 36 sine 16. Okay, get our resultant components. So 42 cosine 167 plus 36 sine 16 is negative 31.0. We'll just say. Then the other guy, 42 sine 167 plus 36 sine 16. Ah. Typos. Okay. Equals 19.37. So now, um, again, resultant vector. Square root of my a squared plus b squared. Those are the numbers up above. So 31 squared plus 19.37 squared to the 1 half power is 36.55 newtons. I feel like I did something wrong again. One with a force of 42 at an angle of 167 and 36 at an angle of 16. I wonder if I typed something wrong. Mm -hmm. So 42 cosine 67 angle of 167 plus 36 cosine 16 oh sure enough mistyped so again be really careful it's a good illustration 167 plus 36 cosine 16 yeah, that should be negative 6.3. So I think I just typed it in incorrectly. Okay, and then let's make sure the other one. 42 sine 167 plus 86 sine 16. 30, well, what, was that? what happened there? That's weird. That's 33.1. Okay, so that's again gonna change my resultant vector. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 6.3 squared plus 33.1 squared to the one half power. Hmm. Pause it if you need to, guys. <laughs> I'll give you a check mark when I when I find it. All right, 42 at angle 167, 36. Angle 16, cosine 167, plus 36, cosine 16. It's definitely negative 6.3. Okay, then 42, sine 167, 
plus 36 sine 16. Wow. I don't know what's going on with my... This has been a... That's why I don't do this at the end of the day. Sorry, guys. Okay, so change one more time. So 6.3 squared plus 19.37 squared to the one-half power. This feels right. 20.3. There we go. Nice. Okay, so 20.3... Newtons is our resultant vector. Okay, and then we know that we're looking for the theta. So we're that's the direction. So my theta is inverse tangent of b, which is my y component, divided by a. Okay, so inverse tangent 19.37 divided by negative 6.3. So it's negative 71.98 degrees. Okay, obviously we don't want to answer with a negative um, angle. Okay, so because they're giving us a negative angle, they're giving us this answer right here. We want the one in quadrant two. So I'm actually going to add 180. So I'm taking this plus 180 to get 108 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know this is 108 degrees, 0 0.02. That would be the resultant vector, resultant, okay? But we don't want the resultant, we want the equilibrium vector. The force or the, the magnitude is going to be the same for the um, equilibrium and the resultant, but the equilibrium will be in the opposing direction. So if I have, just to kind of emphasize, watch where I'm drawing here. If this is my resultant vector that I'm scoring right now, that's the resultant vector. The equilibrium vector has to run in the opposite direction to balance it out. So it's actually going to be that initial location, but we just don't want it expressed as a negative angle. So I would actually add to the original outcome here. I'm just correcting it and making it positive. So I just add a full rotation. So negative 71.98 plus 360 to make sure it's not a negative angle. It gives me 288.1-ish degrees. 288, we'll just say, goodness. So 288 0.02 degrees. And that would be my equilibrium angle. Um, because they were explaining it to us in standard form, we can answer in standard form. We don't need to use the bearings. Okay, this one, remember I was having you skip. Okay, um, five, we have three forces now, again. And sometimes it might even be better to draw like individual, maybe let's do a diagram for each because they could just get kind of messy out all in one. Okay, so we have one is 54 north, 77 west. That would be this way which is 167 degrees. So we'll write the stats here, 167 degrees, um, 54 Newtons. Okay, the other guy is south, 22 west. So that's 22, so it's actually 248 degrees total. Right, because that would be 270 minus uh, 22. And that's 54, uh, 45 newtons. And then my third one, mm, three forces, one with magnitude, one with 45. Oh, and one is unknown magnitude in the direction of north east. So if it's in the direction of north east, it would be this way. That's just 45 degrees. And unknown magnitude, so we call it X. Resultant force is due north. Okay, so maybe we'll do this one in black. So the resultant force is just going straight up, which means that's an angle of 90 degrees. Um, and then we don't know the magnitude of that one there. It's the magnitude of the northeasterly force. 
um, actually is x. And then the magnitude of the resultant would be y. Okay, so here's where we do our summation. So we're saying summation in the x direction is 54 cosine 167 plus 45 cosine 248 plus unknown cosine 45 equals, now we have an outcome, y cosine 90, okay? Summation in the y direction is 54 sine 167 plus 45 sine 248 plus unknown sine 45 equals y sine 90. We know cosine of 90 degrees, this is zero, right? So if this whole thing zeroes out, then we're actually going to use this equation to solve for x, right? So I'm actually going to set all of that equal to zero. Um, and so let's bring it down below like this. So I would have, if I rearrange it, then x cosine 45, right? I'm isolating the x part is equal to negative 54 cosine 167 minus 45 cosine 248. So we're subtracting um, the two numerical components over. And then I would have to divide by cosine 45. So negative 54 cosine 167 minus 45 cosine 248 divided by cosine 45 using your calculator for all this, is 98.25 degrees. So x then is 98.25 newtons. I already have an answer here. Okay, and then I would be plugging that back in to um, equation number two to solve for y. Right, so if I do this in another color, so we have, just copying down that second equation, 54 sine 167, plus 45 sine 248 plus um, what is now 98.25 sine 45 equals, okay, sine of 90 degrees is one. So that means it just equals y. So if I just crunch all these numbers, 54 sine 167 plus 45 sine of 248 plus 98.25 sine of 45, 39.89 equals y. Okay, um, this is already, like x is already a, um, an outcome, right? And then the magnitude of the resultant vector would be this guy. So they're both in terms of newtons. So this, is be, this would be the um, northeasterly force the northeast force, and then this guy was the resultant force. Cool. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's look at this next one. So now we have three forces being applied to an object that is at equilibrium. First two forces are 30 newtons due north. I like when they're nice. Okay, 30 north, that's easy. 23 west, also easy. We want to find the magnitude direction of the third force. Um, so there's a third one that's making the, um, that is putting, oh, I think I should have you guys skip that one too. I'm gonna update that as well. I'll have you guys skip this too, because this one was not a good representation of what we would see on the test or anything going forward that you're responsible for. All right, guys, hopefully that helped out. Bye.